Hi everyone, Eric here. Today we're going to be looking at using Playmaker to generate nav mesh at runtime. So this means that you can place new objects or prefabs into your scene here and then add them to your nav mesh. Now this is something that wasn't previously available for Unity that has been recently added. However, to do this you currently need to download a few scripts from the GitHub account from Unity, as well as you're going to need two Playmaker actions. So first I'm going to quickly show you which scripts you need from Unity. Now I will add a link to this in the description but you're going to need to go to the unity-technologies backslash minav mesh components in the github um, for unity and once you're here you're going to go into assets examples scripts and then you're going to need two scripts from here to make this happen. The first one we're going to use is the local nav mesh builder. And we are going to use the nav mesh source tag. Now, if you're going to use, um, you can download this and use a whole bunch of scripts from here. Or, you know, the quickest way I usually do this is just to download the entire zip here and then just take out the files that I need. So this tends to work best. Okay, once you do that, put those two scripts into your Unity project. You can put them anywhere, but you probably want to make a special folder for it. The next thing you want to do is download two actions here. Let's have a look to see what those actions are. And I've added them here under nav mesh extended. So you're going to look for on the ecosystem an action called add local nav mesh builder and also add nav mesh source tag. Now I'll give you a quick preview of what we're going to do with this. So I'll hit play and I've added a uh, floor here basically and already gone into navigation and I've baked the navigation here for this uh, floor. But when I right click here you can see that I'm placing some prefabs on the scene so using create object. However, they're not being recognized by NavMesh. Now, when I left click on them, you can see that NavMesh is being added to them and they're now part of the overall NavMesh. So this is great. So this means we can basically add objects and use Playmaker to add NavMesh at runtime. So you don't have to set this up with mouse clicks. You could you know, add this NavMesh any way you want, triggering it with Playmaker. I've just set it up with uh, mouse clicks to show you sort of an easy way to do this. So let's just run through this whole process. And to do that, I'm going to delete everything I've got on my scene, including this floor. There we go. So we'll go to nav mesh and I'll just clear this out. Okay, so I've got my scene on my left hand side and my game on my right hand side, and I'm just going to create a 3D object, choose cube, grab the inspector, and I'm going to call this floor. This will be my basic floor. And I'm going to give it enough room here, so say 20.1 by 20, and that's a, a good area for me. So I'll adjust how I want my camera to be in my scene view, then I'll click on my main camera, choose game object, and align with view, and now they match each other. The next thing you want to do is actually create a prefab to place in the scene. And I've already gone ahead and done this and put it into my prefabs folder. So I just created a prefab here I called walk, as in something we can walk on, and you can see it's just another cube that's 3 by 0.5 by 3, and I gave it a material, which is some orange or a reddish color here. So then drag that into a new folder, and it will create a prefab for you. So I'm going to grab um, you know, some kind of color and just uh, put it down here so we can see this easier. Now the next thing I want to do is just create a empty game object and I'm going to use this to uh, place prefab and I will add a playmaker action here. We'll choose actions and we're going to look for a mouse down. So get mouse button down, we'll drag it in here to make the first scene or the first uh, state and Sure, why don't we use the left mouse button to place prefab. And then I'll just add a event here. 
And in the second state, call the first state uh, mouse down. In the second state, we'll use the uh, mouse pick event, which is going to get us our mouse information. So we want to store the point. This is wherever we are clicking. Once that's done, we'll have finished. I'll call this mouse pick. And now we have a third state, and we can use the action of create object. And this will go ahead and place our object. What game object? Well, I'm just going to browse for it. I'm using the one called walk. The position is at my point. So we could make this um, even more specific. But for our cases here, this will be good enough. Once the prefab is placed, we'll go back and wait for more mouse clicks. So go ahead and save your scene just in case you lose something and hit play. And make sure you're clicking in your game view and now we can place prefabs on the screen. Okay, so let's talk about the actual nav mesh. So normally in nav mesh um, from the past, if you need to grab an object such as the floor and then go to your inspector and make sure it's set to static, then go to your navigation tab or your navigation window you can open up from here, then click bake and it's gonna bake this um, game object. Now for the new runtime way of doing this, we actually need to set up an area that's being watched for new updates because we don't want to watch our entire scene because that would be uh, potentially too limiting as far as uh, memory goes. So for example, I'm going to create an empty game object and in the inspector I can call this um, nav mesh area. You can call this whatever you want. And with the new scripts that we got, we could actually just add a component and we can add a local nav mesh builder. We don't need to do this at runtime. We can do this at any time. And you see that it creates a box around my game object here, which was a nav mesh area. And anything inside this box is going to be um, is going to be re-nav meshed at, at runtime if we tell it to. So not everything in here, just only the things that we tell it to. So you can set a specific object that you want it to be tracked to. It doesn't have to be this game object, it could be another object, as well as you can set the size here. So you can preset this. What we're going to do is actually set this at runtime. And so how I'm going to do this is just remove this component and I'm going to add an FSM to this and the FSM I want to use is called uh, Add Local Nav Mesh Builder. So we'll just add an FSM to this nav mesh area and the game object is the owner of this nav mesh area and we can also optionally set the build size using a vector 3 if we want or we can uh, set a specific object to be tracked. I'm just going to use the main game object to be tracked. So we'll save this and hit play and make sure this works for us. And now we can see that it's automatically added this component for us and we could you know, adjust these parameters if we wanted to, but I've let them be filled out automatically. Okay, the next thing we want to do is create uh, an ability to click objects and add the nav mesh tag to them so they know to be tagged at runtime. So for example, um, I'm going to add two game objects to the scene. I'll create a cube here. Let's just zoom in. Say this is three by three and we have two of these. And right now if we hit play, they are not going to be dynamically added to the nav mesh at runtime. They will just be regular cubes. So this is a going, we'll, hit, we'll go to nav mesh and we'll see and we can see nothing's happening. So let's create an action or a, a, sorry, a new uh, Playmaker FSM and I'll just call it something like uh, click to add nav mesh and the action we're going to use is let's check our recents here is we want to use this add nav mesh source tag and so to do that I am going to use the get mouse down again and this time I'll use the right one choose a new event just called uh, right mouse 
and we'll bring it to the next state and just like before we're going to use these uh, mouse pick event and this time we are going to get the game object I'll call it clicked object and once that's done I'll finish this and then in the third and final state here we're going to add nav mesh source tag and I can specify an object and the object I'm going to specify is the clicked object and again we can just add a finish state to this and we'll go back so the first state is mouse down the second state is mouse pick and the last one is add nav tag okay so let's save this and click play so our area should be um, added here if we see and now we can click and make sure you're on the game side and we actually need to open up the navigation in order to see it so if we click here left click you can see that now it has been added and what it's actually doing is just adding a um, it's adding this nav mesh source tag script onto it which dynamically adds it the nav mesh so I can click around here we'll add a bunch of new prefabs and we'll click navigation so we can see it and I'll left click these and now they're part of the navigation so as you can guess we can you know you don't have to set this up with a mouse click that could be any kind of event you could even add this uh, directly to your your prefabs so for example if I go ahead and actually grab the prefab grab the walk prefab here and in the inspector I can just add a component and say um, what is it nav mesh tag a nav mesh source tag and we can update our prefab and let's go ahead and push play and now whenever we place a prefab you can see it's automatically it has been added as well so we don't even need to use playmaker to do this specifically we're just going to use playmaker to do this if we have some you know specific requirement that we want to do we want to add at runtime we might want to change the location of the area that we're nav meshing so we're not nav meshing a whole bunch of areas uh, dynamically or we might be using different kinds of prefabs or different sort of things so we might uh, you know want to dynamically add this script so that's it uh, you know if you have any questions comments concerns go ahead and leave them in the, in the comment section below and we'll do our best to get back to you